We're in Windows 10. I'm going to show you how to install an FTP server so you can copy files over. We're going to go to Control Panel. Let's go to right click and choose Search and type in Control Panel until it comes up. From here we're going to go to Programs and Features. Now eventually Microsoft is going to move this over into the System icon and you'll be adding programs that way. But for now, this is how we get there but I'm sure it'll work pretty much the same way. Turn Windows features on or off. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go to IIS, Internet Information Services. So let's expand that and we're going to expand a couple of things here. Uh, first thing is we're going to want to do, choose the FTP server and you can just go ahead and choose the default that gets checked when you do that. Now we're going to want to check the IIS Management Console. And down here, we're not going to need anything else, so we can just go ahead and click OK. Very good. So now it's done. Now we're going to go to All Control Panel Items. Now, if you don't see this, make sure you go to View By and choose the large or small icons. If it's set to Category, it's going to look like this. So let's go to Large Icons. And from here, we're going to go to Administrative Tools. And then we're going to see Internet Information Services IS Manager. We're going to open that up, and now we see our computer. So we don't have any sites yet. We just have the default uh, website, which we don't even have installed, so we're going to get that error, which is fine. Let's go ahead and right-click, and we're going to choose to create a new FTP site. So I'll right-click on Sites, choose Add FTP Site, and let's go ahead and give this uh, site name Test, and we'll give it a path, and we'll go ahead and choose the button there to choose where we want to put it and we'll just go ahead and put it into inet pub ftp root but you can put it anywhere you want go ahead and click next now we can choose which ip addresses to bind to you can hit the drop down and choose a specific ip address so i was using this to upgrade a cisco asa firewall it was on a 16 network so i had to switch over to use that ip address but my regular network is 15.2 so what would happen is if you choose all unassigned it might pick the wrong one and you may not be able to communicate with what you want to communicate with so make sure you choose the ip address that has the correct subnet for what you want to connect to so in my case it was 16.50 so we'll just go ahead and choose that. All right, so we don't want to use SSL basically for uh, connecting to, a, say, a Cisco ASA or a Cisco firewall to do an FTP. So we we'll just go ahead and check the no SSL option. We will leave uh, FTP to uh, start automatically, however. Go ahead and click Next. And we want to choose Authentication set to Anonymous. We don't want to have to put in a username and password. And we have allow access to, it says not selected, we're going to choose anonymous users. And we'll give anonymous users read and write permissions. Again, this is something we're setting up so we can copy images onto a Cisco or some other type of firewall or router. This is not going to be the type of FTP server to set up for, say, outside access. I have a separate video for that, and uh, you can go ahead and take a look at it. Go ahead and click finish. And there is our FTP site. So let's go ahead and click on uh, authentication and just make sure anonymous is enabled, basic is disabled. So fantastic. And we have authorization, anonymous, read and write. That's what we want. And then uh, we have firewall support. We're just going to leave that blank because we do not have an external IP address for our firewall. The rest of this is all fine exactly the way it is and you can now go ahead and FTP into it. So just as a, a test, let's go ahead and pull up a command prompt and we'll just go ahead and put in FTP and I'm just going to type localhost, although you can put in the IP address if you want. And you can see here that it was closed right away because it's trying to use my default IP address which is in the 15 range. You can see there, there's my 15 address. So I'm going to try telnetting, I'm sorry, FTP into the 192.168.16.50 address, which is the IP address that I told it to use. So now it says your user. Do you uh, have any kind of username? Well, we'll just put uh, anonymous and password. We will just leave it blank, and we're logged in. And if we hit LS, uh, then we can see basically there's nothing in our folder that we created. So that does a uh, list all the different files. 
So our FTP site is definitely working. We should now be able to go into our router or firewall and we should be able to FTP from uh, the uh, computer into the firewall or the router that we need to do. However, um, in some cases, it may not properly open up the port that you want, which in this case is port 23. So we want to go back into our control panel and we want to go into Windows Firewall. So it's now called Windows Defender Firewall. And what we want to do is just turn it off. Turn off the firewall. You could easily also, if you know how to do it, you could open up port uh, 23 FTP, or uh, TCP, pardon me, um, 23, and then it will work with FTP. Uh, but uh, this is just for uh, setting up a, an FTP server to connect to routers and firewalls in a secured or a network that we trust. So we'll go ahead and use that. Once we're all done with uh, FTP, we can go ahead and choose Use Recommended Settings and then it'll put it back to the way it was. So that's how you set up an FTP server for a router or firewall or something else where you want to connect into it uh, so you can copy files over uh, on your local computer.